verses from the New Living Translation. I'm going to give you the subject, and we're going to have a little talk this morning. Y'all ready to talk back to me? I asked you a question. Are you ready to talk back to me? And the word of the Lord comes to us, and when they came nigh to Jerusalem, it's on the screen, unto Bethage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples, <laughs> and said unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as be ye entered into it, ye shall find a coat, a donkey, tied, whereon never man sat, nobody ever wore it. Loose him. Say that with me. Loose him. And bring him. Verse 3, and if any Say unto you, why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord have need of him. Amen. And straightway he will send him hither or send him back. And they went their way and found the coat tied. Somebody shout tied. tied. By the door without uh, in a place where two days ways met and they loosed him. Amen. Say loose him. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye loosen the coat? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the coat to Jesus and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees and straw them in the way. In other words, to make his ride come. They that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father, David, that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked round about upon all things and now the even tide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. Remain standing. From the same passage, verses 2 and 4 from the New Living Translation. Go into that village over there, he told them. As soon as you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, what are you doing? Just say the Lord needs it and will return it soon. The two disciples left and found the coat standing in the street, tied outside the front door. Remain standing. We're going to pray, but the message I want to preach from, just want to have a little talk. I want to talk about this donkey talk. Help us, Father, in Jesus' name. You may have your seats. Grass withered, but the flower faded away. <clears throat> but the word of our God shall stand forever. Now, the primary emphasis on this passage is the revelation of Jesus to Israel that he is the long awaited Messiah. primary message is when Jesus now is entering into Jerusalem that they call the triumphal entry purposeful at the end of the day to be crucified on a rugged cross. As he was entering to Jerusalem, the crowd erupt. They were hollering, Hosanna in the highest. They were excited because they were believing that the Messiah, that the king of the Jews were coming to Jerusalem to overcome the Roman oppression. They were looking for him to overthrow the Roman government, so they were excited to get back in place of him. But as they were crying out Hosanna and praising God and laying palm and waving palm and laying their garments on the ground and shouting and screaming, the text reminds us Jesus was weeping. 
because they've understood at the end of the day, those same people that was hollering and screaming on Sunday on Palm Sunday, that on Friday the same people was crying Hosanna, will be the same people that will say crucify him. Normally, I would title this sort of message, they will love you today, then hate you tomorrow. Talk back to me if you can. They smile in your face. All the time, want to take your place. No backstabs. Backstabs. The teaching in this passage is glorious, but I want to focus in this morning as Jesus entered the city on his relationship with this little donkey. We hardly ever talk about this donkey. No, nobody ever mentioned much about this coat. Nobody ever talks about the relationship with Christ with this coat. Now, most of us have heard about theology and soteriology and Christology and eschatology and ecclesiology and Pneumatology, but this morning, Jody, I want to talk about another ology that doesn't get a lot of attention. I want to preach about donkeyology. I just want to have a little donkey talk. I'm interested this morning in that little donkey. It's critical to see this because the Lord needed that donkey to fulfill his mission on earth. It's right in the text. Mark 11, verse 3, New International Version. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it. And we'll send it back here shortly. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's critical to see this because the Bible is so clear about the need of this donkey from the Lord. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? Jesus is God. And he could have done this any way he chose to, but he chose to use that little donkey. And, and by the way, he's still using little donkeys today. I can't hear nobody. Little Kenny, he's using folk, watch this here, who we think is insignificant to get his work done here in earth. In other words, he uses folk, Jamila, like you and me. Now, he certainly does not need us, but he chose to make us part of his plan. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be a part of the Lord's plan. I'm glad he can use a little donkey like me. Yeah. So let me mention a few important facts about this little donkey this morning. First of all, it's on the screen. That donkey had to be redeemed. The donkey had to be redeemed. According to the word of God, that donkey was only alive, I'm so fine, and available to the Lord because it had been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I know you don't believe me. Let me take you to Exodus chapter 13, New International Version. It says it like this. Redeem with the Lamb every firstborn donkey. But if you do not redeem it, break his neck. Redeem every firstborn among your sons. And the people of God says amen. amen. Still don't believe me? Look at Exodus chapter 34, same book, verse 20, NIV. Redeem the firstborn donkey with a lamb. But if you do not redeem it, break his neck. Redeem all your firstborn sons. Now, that neither the same could be said of us today. In our natural state, we were dead in trespasses and sins. In our natural state, we are given over to the lust of our flesh. In our natural state, we were fit for hell. That was our natural state. But here's the shout. That may be how the Lord found us, but that's not how he left us. Have I got a witness here? When he saved us by his grace, he changed us completely. He gives us his life everlasting, and he delivered us from the penalty of our sins. Oh, bless his name. That's the only reason you and I have usefulness to the Lord today. Talk back to me if you can. He redeemed you. And I praise God this morning for the redeeming power of the blood.
blood of Jesus. You need to give God praise if you're redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I thank God. I was on my way to hell. But touch somebody and tell your neighbor, God redeemed me. So just because he redeemed me, I will lift up my hands and give God glory because he didn't leave me where I was. I was on my way to hell, but God, who is rich in mercy, pulled me in, changed my life. I need somebody that can testify that you're here because you've been redeemed. You're not here because you kept the Bible closely. You're not here because you did, did everything right. If I was you I give God a praise right now for the grace he redeemed you we are saved by grace through faith not of works it's the gift of God shall any man boast come on open your mouth and tell your neighbor I am redeemed um, I need somebody just will understand that redemption is not an option it's a necessity yeah, I needed to be redeemed. Oh, y'all not saying nothing here, but I was a low down, good for nothing, scum of the earth, backbiting, hope mongering sinner on my way to hell. I was a hoe chasing, free basing, cocaine sniffing, wine nipping, pill popping, weed chopping, cigarette sucking devil. But God redeemed me, gave me a chance, gave me a word, gave my life meaning. And if I was you, I'd throw my head back and from my belly and tell God, thank you for redeeming me. Thank you and you ain't leave me where I were. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you could have seen me where I was and see where I am today, you will give God praise for me right now. Because I was low down. Y'all not saying nothing here. But the Lord picked me up. Do I have a witness here? Turn me around, gave me what I needed. That's why I'm here. Somebody shout glory. Because the Bible is clear now. Listen. That redemption is not an option. Redemption is a necessity. That, that donkey needed to be redeemed. Watch this. Jesus put, Jesus put it, it this way. He says to Nicodemus in John 3, and Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He was a Jewish rabbi. And the Bible says he came to Jesus by night. Look at John 3, 7, where Jesus says to Nicodemus. He says, you should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. Redemption is not an option. It's a necessity. You see, without the new birth, you are lost in your sins. Notice now the Lord did not say be baptized and join the church and do good things. Y'all quiet. The Lord told Nicodemus, watch this, that he needed a new life. Yeah, he knew scriptures, but he didn't know what the scriptures was all about. The scriptures was pointing to he that needed. Come on, say amen. You see, redemption is not something that happens because you join a church or you were baptized. It's not something that comes to you because you stop committing a sin. It's not something you get by being a better person. Better person's going to hell. Y'all quiet here. Uh, people are in hell right now with good intentions, but Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except he comes. I wish I had a church here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can't come no other way. You got to come through the door. And Jesus says, I am the door. Any man come from any other way, call him a thief or a robber. I need somebody right now to give God praise. Can I preach the gospel right here in this first message? For God so loved the world. I need somebody to help me preach. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Y'all can help me preach. But he shall have everlasting life. Uh, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. While we were yet sinners. Christ died for the ungodly. High five your neighbor. Tell your neighbor he died just for me. And I'm so glad that day. That he died for me. And not only did he die for me. But he delivered me. He shook that devil off my back. I need somebody to open your mouth and tell that devil right now, you can't touch me because God got my back. Uh, tell somebody right now, the devil should have killed me. Why he had me? But thanks be to God through Jesus Christ who gives us up the victory. Touch your neighbor. Tell him, I got a 
got a way. I got a oh, tell him I got a way. I got a way. Oh, grab somebody, tell him I got a way. Yeah. Uh, so redemption now is very, very important. Salvation comes, listen, when a lost sinner is convicted of sin and looks by faith to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. I thank God this morning I am redeemed. Part with the price. Jesus have changed my whole life. If anybody asks you just who I am, tell them I am redeemed. Y'all not saying nothing. That was from my old Baptist shirt. I am redeemed. Bought with the price. Jesus has changed my whole life. If anybody asks you just who I am, tell them I am redeemed. Um, tell somebody my name is redeemed. I've been bought with the price. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tell somebody the Lord bought me out of this. Um, I thank God. Um, I found your neighbor telling the Lord brought me out. Oh, Y'all still ain't saying nothing. You know somebody telling the Lord brought me out. Um, I was not good enough to do it. But the Lord, he did it. Look at somebody telling him, won't God do it? Oh, y'all not saying that it's so the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. I feel preaching here. Um, the Bible says redemption is not an option, but it is a necessity. So, number one, that donkey had to be redeemed, Jamila. And secondly, it's on the screen, that donkey had to be released. Uh, number one, that donkey needed to be redeemed. And secondly, that donkey had to be released. <laughs> Um, so when the disciples, watch this here, heard from Jesus, watch this, Jesus told the disciples about that little donkey. Listen, he told them they would find him tied up. Now I'm writing the text. Tied up. Um, you, you will find that donkey tied up. It's right in the text, y'all don't believe me. Verse 2, Mark 11, King James. He says, and he said to them, go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as ye be entered into it, you shall find a coat tied. Where on never a man or set and loose him and, and bring him here. Yeah. Now, now listen, beloved, this is gonna bless your life. They, 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 they were to untie the donkey and bring it to Jesus. Which is what they did. Uh, they, they were to untie the donkey and bring it to Jesus. Uh, which what they did. Watch this. Mark 11, 4. English Standard Version. Jason, your best version. It says this. And they went away and found a coat tied at the door outside in the street. And they untied it. Uh, uh, Y'all don't know what to shout. Uh, now, 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 that, that little donkey crystal was bound and it needed to be set free before the Lord could use it. Tell somebody, God got to loose you before he use you. Uh, uh, you going to see. Liberty House, when Jesus found us, we were just like that little donkey. I can't hear nobody. We were tied up. Y'all cry. And tangled up. But somebody can testify. If y'all not too, 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 too embarrassed, you can testify. I was tied up. I was tied up in some stuff. I couldn't get myself out of it. Y'all cry. Tied to fornication. And tied to adultery. And perversion. And tied to gambling. And, and tied to lying. And stealing. And tied to cheating. And manipulating. And conniving. And slander. Tied to gossip. And backbiting. And undermining. Y'all not saying nothing here. We were tied up and unused. Have I got a witness here? Tell somebody, but I'm losing. Loose now. Y'all quiet here. Grab somebody, tell them I'm loose now. I was tied up, but God loose me. Um, grab somebody, tell them loose me and let me go. You have to see this, beloved, because before you and I can be used of God, the chains of our sins must be broken. And we must be set free. You see, when we are bound in those conditions, listen, we are useless to the Lord. 
creature. We cannot serve him and live for him and bring glory to his name tied up. Y'all not saying nothing. We are useless in that bound up, tied down condition. Tell somebody you got to be free, baby. You got to be free. Yeah. You can't still be a trick and be used with God. You got to get free from that. You can't keep on horning around and be used by God. You can't keep on smoking dippers, come on, and turning up and acting like you crazy. You got to be loose. Tell somebody, I got to get loose today. God told me some of y'all right now, you going to leave here loose by the power of God. You came in here crawling, but you going to leave here leaping. God about to deliver you from some stuff you've been tied up with for a long time. Grab your neighbor say, neighbor, I'm ready to get loose. I'm ready for God to use me. Tell him it's my season to be used by God. Um, I've been waiting for this opportunity. High five about three people and tell them this is the moment I've been waiting for. God is about to loose me into my destiny. I need you to get the right neighbor because you got the wrong neighbor. They ain't excited because they tied up. Grab their hand right now and say, loose that devil off it in the name of Jesus. God going to give you the power to loose them and take them to the Lord. Um, grab somebody, tell them I'm saved and delivered. Tell somebody else I'm saved and delivered. I've been washed in the blood. I've been sanctified. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, shake somebody by the hand and tell your neighbor you don't know who you're looking at. Tell somebody you're looking at a loose child of God. And when I open my mouth, everything on my road got to change. Oh, y'all quiet. I dare you look down your road say, road change now. I got the anointing of deliverance on my life. If I lay my hands on you, you gonna be set free. Oh, look at your mouth right now, throw your head back, and say, Lord, do what you gotta do. I'm ready to be used by God. Yeah. He will use you anywhere, anytime, and any place. I praise him this morning that just what God does for his people now, he comes right there where you are and he gives us liberty. Tell somebody, you don't know where you are this morning. I am in the liberty house. God going to set you free today. What had you bound yesterday? Um, you need to say bye-bye, baby. I ain't fooling around no more. I ain't laying around no more. I'm going to keep myself holy unto God. Oh, goodbye, somebody high five. And tell them I'm going to keep myself holy. I'm not going to indulge in perversion. Um, God's giving me the ability to overcome. Shout hallelujah. So I don't know if the Lord has ever released you from anything. But I do know if he has, you need to give him praise right now. Come on, you need to lift them up right now. I don't know your story, but let me tell you my story. I was stuck on crack, but God delivered me. I was a womanizer, but God delivered me. I was a lying, cheating dog, but God, I ain't got no help here. But look at you, you look like, um, you never did anything, but do I got anybody like me? You was a crook. Um, you laid down with other people's people. Uh, and didn't catch them, you ought to be thankful. Grab somebody, tell them I'm free today. So you got to see this here. I got to close now. Verse 3, verse 3, be seated. Verse 3 is noteworthy. Watch this. Verse 3. It's not on the screen that I need it, but it's noteworthy. Verse 3. Verse 3 says, And they said unto them, watch this, as Jesus even commanded, and they let them go. Watch this. The disciples said to the owner of the donkey, watch this, and he said to them, the disciple says, even as Jesus commanded, and the owners, and they let them go. Now, the question is, what did Jesus command? Right there, in, in verse 6, I'm sorry, in verse, verse 6, you will find that. He commanded in verse 3, he said, straightway, watch this, straightway, he shall give him hither. In, in, verse, in verse 3, straightway, he shall or he will give him hither. Jesus said, listen, if anybody inquire concerning the donkey, I'm right over here, listen. Tell them I have need of him and straightway, watch this, he will give him hither. In other words, 
when Jesus, watch this, takes this donkey and uses him, watch this, when he's finished using the donkey, he will take him back. That's what that means. He said, and straightway, he will give him hither. In other words, he tells the disciples to tell the owner of the donkey, when I'm finished using this donkey, I will send it back as soon as I can. Now, when the donkey got back, watch this. The donkey was better than it was when he left. Here's your place to shout. It's nowhere. Uh -uh. Before the donkey left, it was untied and unbroken. But when the donkey came back, it was ready for sale. Y'all missed that. Uh -uh. Before the donkey left, it was untied and unbroken. But when the donkey came back, it was ready for sale. Now, 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 Crystal, that's just like Jesus. Whatever we bring or give to him, when he give it back, it's far better than when he got it. Yeah, yeah, now say nothing. Have you ever been there, your children acting a fool and your husband or your wife lost their mind acting crazy, but you decided to give them to Jesus and when Jesus gave them back to you, they were far better than they were when he got them. Y'all not saying nothing here. Y'all quiet. You can testify right now. Glory to God. If you give Jesus or bring Jesus an acorn, he'll give you an oak tree. Y'all quiet. If you give Jesus an Abram, he'll give you back an Abraham. If you give Jesus, watch this, uh, if you give him a persecuting soul, he will give him back to you a praying Apostle Paul. If you give Jesus a skittish, fretful, and fearful Simon, he will give you back to him or give him back to you. Watch this here. A Holy Ghost filled Apostle Peter. Y'all cry. If you give Jesus your low down, good for nothing, sinful life in return, he will give you back a new life. Y'all not saying that. If any man be in Christ, he's a all things are passed away and behold, all things become new. I need somebody to testify. When you got ready to give your life to God, God turned it around. I came to tell about 15 people, little is made much. When you place it in the master's hand, you used to be a trick, but now you're preaching. You used to come on say be a liar, but you want to praise him. You used to steal, but now you're teaching Sunday school. I need somebody who will know that when you give it to Jesus, he'll give it back to you better than what you gave to him. You ought to open your mouth say, I'm better because I gave my life. Yeah, I gave my life to Jesus. So, Ah, the text reveals that they were to untie the donkey and bring it to Jesus, which is what they did. That little donkey was bound and it needed to be set free before the Lord can use it. So number one, I'm out of here. Y'all good? God Almighty. That donkey had to be redeemed. I feel like shouting now. And then so, uh, and secondly, that donkey had to be released. I'm a preacher here today. Uh, and then thirdly, don't that donkey had to be ruled. Here's going to be my quiet place right here. Here's going to be my quiet church. You shouted about being redeemed and shouted about being released. But that donkey had to be ruled. Y'all not going to shout. Someone had to take charge over that donkey. Verse 2 tells us that the donkey had never been broken to ride. It was a wild animal. It needed to be ruled. Watch this. That little wild donkey needed a master. It was wild. Yet it submitted itself to the Lord's control. Watch this. If you get honest this morning, beloved, some of us up in here was wild. As a matter of fact, quiet as a camp, some of us are still wild. Up in the church, still wild. Uh -uh. Up, up, up in many 
ministry and, and, and doing things for God were wilding out. Uh, you are unbroken. You're, 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 you're untamed. You're, you're not broken in yet. But Jesus, here's your place to shout, has a way of breaking you in. Talk back to me if you can. Pain has a way of breaking you in. Calamity has a way of breaking you in. I'm dealing with a catastrophe has a way of breaking you in. Grab somebody, tell your neighbor, tell my neighbor, I've been broken in. Yeah, That donkey needed to be ruled. Watch this. That little donkey surrendered to the Lord's authority. That's exactly what the Lord expects of us. To wander. He's looking for total submission and surrender from our lives. Let's face it this morning, children of God, I'm out of here. Some people have a real problem with authority. See how quiet y'all got right there? There are folk who just have a hard time with the idea of someone having authority over them. Let me teach this. Whether it's your parents at home or uh, uh, their boss at work or their pastor at church, they have a hard time with authority. The fact is, there is always someone over us. Y'all don't want to talk here, okay? In the home, on the job, in the church. Problem is, there's too many chiefs and, and, and no Indians. Uh, 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 uh. Someone should be ruling. Can't hit nobody. Uh, authority, listen, is just a tool God uses to get a job done. He created authority. He even puts his word over his name. He has to obey his own word. His word rules him because he cannot lie. Y'all not saying nothing. That's why if the Lord spoke it, shall it not come to pass? Uh, 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 if the Lord said it, shall he not make it good? Uh, he's not a God that shall lie. No, son of man that repent. Listen, God can not lie. If I said my wife has on a purple dress, that would be a lie because she has on a red dress. But if God says she has on a pink dress, it becomes what he said. Y'all not saying that because God cannot lie. He puts his word over his name. Word, God, man, woman, children. Authority. But nobody wants to be ruled. Everybody wants to do their own thing. Nobody wants to honor anybody because they don't understand what's this authority. Because no one ever taught them about honor. Most of our young black men in our culture don't understand authority because nobody explained honor. They never had a male figure that was positive in their life that they can look up to. So what we did, we despised who God put in place and we went to the street and we made them our role models. And they didn't respect nothing or had no honor for anything. So a person would never understand authority if they can't appreciate honor. If I'm your daddy, where's my honor? That donkey needed to be ruled because the donkey was wild. A jackass. Quiet, that's what the donkey was. I asked. All over the place. Unbroken. So after they released them, they had to break them in. Jesus will break you up. To break you in. Jesus, Jesus will break you down so you can get a breakthrough. Y'all quiet, y'all didn't get that. 
Some of y'all right now going through a breakdown, but can I help you? You on your way back up. Because Jesus is going to ride you until you finish your destination. I got a witness. I feel preaching here today, I promise you. So now, uh, somebody has to be in charge or chaos is inevitable. Nobody want to submit. Nobody wants to follow instruction. Everybody wants to be in charge. Everybody wants to be the big shot. Everybody wants to be seen. Everybody want to call the shots. But somebody got to be ruled. Somebody got to follow the instructions. So ultimately, our first and final authority is the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm closing now. <laughs> But one of the most amazing statements in the Bible is found here in verse 3. And it has to do with that little donkey. Watch this. It says, the Lord have need of him. Y'all don't believe me? It's right there on the screen. Verse 3. Put it on the screen, sir. If any man say to you, why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord have need. And straightway he will send him hither. So, so when did God, Brett, ever need anything? That's the tension in the text. Uh, here's what God had to say about his own needs. It's on the screen, Psalm 50, 9 to 12. He said, I would not accept the bull from your house or goats from your foes. For every beast of the forest is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills. And all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the world and its fullness. He owns. All things, yet he possess nothing. He created the stars, yet he had nowhere to lay his own head. He fashioned everything there is out of nothing, and he had to borrow a boat from which he preached his gospel. He created every drop of water that exists in the world. Yet he cried, I thirst while he was dying on the cross. He created every tree, but he died on a borrowed cross. He created every rock, but he had to borrow a tomb in which to be buried. He used the clouds as his chariots, yet he had to borrow a donkey on which to ride. That's the paradox of his life. He was rich, yet he made himself poor so that those who believe on him might enjoy his riches. So being a little donkey isn't so bad when Jesus is your master. Talk back to me if you can. Look what that donkey did. I'm closing. A good preacher closed three times. Look at that donkey did. He got to carry the king of glory into Jerusalem. Uh, the Lord used him as a vehicle to get glory to his name. That's what he wants to do with you and me this morning. So let's yield to him and let him rule us as he sees fit. By the way, beloved, when that little redeemed, released, and ruled donkey walked by with Jesus on his back. Nobody saw the donkey. Y'all missed that all together. All eyes were on the Lord Jesus, and that's how it should always be all the time. But we have too many stars in the kingdom that we can't even see the sun. Still ain't got no shout. But while Jesus rolled on that donkey, they cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And they begin to wave palm branches. Let me hear you. 
and celebrate his entry into Jerusalem. The Bible says those that were in the crowd, they were, watch this, celebrating and giving God praise because the Messiah, their ruler, their king was coming in to overthrow the Roman government. But they got mixed up thinking Jesus was going to come in one way, but he came in another way. They was looking for Jesus to come on a white shining horse ruling and to take over the Roman government, but he came on a donkey. And I stopped by to tell somebody, you cannot gauge the way the Lord will come in in any time in your life. I need somebody to high five your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm so glad I've been redeemed. Yeah, I'm so glad I've been released and I'm so glad I have a ruler. Y'all know him, don't you? He's Adam's redeemer. He's Abel's vindicator. He's Moses' bush on fire. He's Abraham's sacrifice. He's Joshua's battle axe. He's Samson's power. He's David's music. He's Solomon's wisdom. He's Jeremiah's bomb in Gilead. He's Ezekiel's will in the middle of the will. He's Matthew's king. He's Mark's suffering servant. He's Luke's great physician. He's John word made flesh. He's Acts coming of the Holy Ghost. Y'all know him, don't you? He's a rock in the weary land. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. He's the rose of Sharon. He's water when you're thirsty. He's food when you're hungry. He's shelter in the time of a storm. He's the God of gods. He's the prince of princes. He's the fairest of 10,000. Y'all know him, don't you? He's the only faithful witness. He's the giant poetate. Have I got one witness here? He's distinctive in supernatural capacity. He's superlative in sovereign majesty. He's exclusive in spiritual beauty. He's radiant in eternal splendor. He's matches in supernal deity. He died. Didn't it die? <laughs> Grab somebody and tell your neighbor for the last time. Tell them, neighbor, you don't know how I love Jesus. He saved me. Shout hallelujah. He delivered me out of all my fears. Grab somebody for the last time. <laughs> Grab him by the hand, grab him by the hand, grab him by the hand, and tell him, neighbor, I got a word for you. Come on, hold that hand. Don't hold that hand like it's a dead fish, but hold that hand like God is about to make a way. Come on, hold that hand like God is about to open the door and say, neighbor, just in case you're going through, just in case it gets a little hard, tell them, neighbor, I got a word for you. Tell them, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, y'all not happy. Throw your head back and shout, joy. Cometh in the morning. Look at somebody, tell them, I got it. Whoa, I got it. Hey, I got it. Tell somebody, I got it. He picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. Anybody here? Come on, I need somebody to give God praise right now and shout, I know he will. Oh, I know. Say, I know. He redeemed, released, and ruled. Yeah. Duck 
Donkey Show. It's a lot we can learn about that little donkey. He's still using little donkeys to get his job done in the earth. God of the universe. And if God can use a donkey, show him. He can use me. One time he made a donkey talk. Donkey talk. And the first place that Jesus went, that last verse says he went to the temple. Stuff that's that money he goes into that temple and was selling, sell, selling merchandise in the church. And the Bible says, You have turned the house of God into a den of thieves and turned over the money to that town. Can I submit to you that Jesus was not a punk, he wasn't this soft, frail dude that we picture him to be, he was nobody to be trifled with. He loved people, but he hated religion. And he was always for the marginalized. Always for those that were trodden over, forgotten. He's able. He can use a donkey. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gave me. I was walking through the house thinking about my text. He said, God can use anybody. Right? No, he can take this is what the Lord said. I was riding, I was just walking through my house thinking about the text. He said, uh, what did he say? He said, God can take a nobody, turn them to somebody to get the attention of everybody. That's what he said. I, thank you, Holy Ghost. I write, I, I try to write it in my phone for he said, God can take anybody, turn them into somebody to get the attention of everybody. You don't have to be all of that to be used by God. The donkey was a wild, untamed, unbroken, unloosed, tied up. And God says, I got need. Because if I get somebody already got themselves together, they gonna think it was them. That's why when you think you qualified, you just disqualified yourself. God, man, if you can use a a, 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 a dope selling crackhead, see, listen, y'all, I just wasn't, I just wasn't, I, I, I didn't call myself a crackhead. I just ate all the bananas as a monkey. I so I made a lot of dudes rich. I paid their money. I just smoked mine up. Every week to stand up, crook like me. And don't ever think that you know you straight now because you here, because the tables gonna turn on you any given day. And don't you never say what you want to do. Don't act like you know you you saved and you got yourself together. Then you arrived and everything is in place. You can go home and your house be on fire and lose everything and your insurance ain't paid up. So remain low, remain humble, remain thankful, remain grateful. Make sure your relationship with Jesus is real. Make sure it's real. Life can turn on anybody. Man, you can be riding good and get a phone call. I'm talking about you, man. I know you look good. I know you got a closet full of clothes. You driving good. Your, your, you know, your, your house look good. But, baby, you have not always been there. You haven't always had it together. It was by 
That's why we come here every week to be reminded. It doesn't take but one week for you to become narcissistic and think it's about you. I'm doing my thing now. God will break you to ride you. Oh, write that down. He will break you to ride you. If you already think you're there, he can't even use you because you want to do your own thing. He has to train you. He has to master you. Your gift isn't anything without him. And if you don't use it properly or mismanage it, he will take it from you and give it to another. While you sitting on your gift or manipulating with your gift for your own agenda, God will snatch it and give it to somebody else. Throw your hands up. Repeat this, Father. If you have to break me, hold me because I can't take it by myself, by myself. but I'm going to put my life put my in your hand, and I'm certain, I'm certain. When, you back, when you give it back, it will be far better be far than when I gave it to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm set free, delivered, and I'm glad about it. And if you're glad, shout like you're glad.